All right, I know, I get it, I'm late. Y'all notice how cold it is outside? I fish most of the week, and then just like most of you guys, I've been trying to find some pipe insulation and stuff for my faucets and cover my water well. I live out in the country, so I have a just a water well out in my backyard, and I have frozen it solid before. My friends had a good time watching me use a, a pear burner, I think up here in where we're at, they call it a weed burner. I'm from South Texas, it's called a pear burner. And I'm outside, <laughs> just torching this water well to pieces. But I'm trying to thaw it out. It was 20 degrees, we didn't have any water in the house. And uh, my neighbor, he walks up to me and he says, he says, hey, you're lighting your well on fire. So the, the insulation, everything was up in flames. And I looked at him and I said, I can't hear you, the flame. Because that thing's loud, but hey, I thawed it out. Uh, two of my closest friends, they, they weren't my closest friends back then, but that was a bonding moment. They got to witness it, and I've heard about it for years. But so, cold outside. We've got some, you know, there's a possible fish kill coming. I'm going to wait until next week. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to call friends from up and down the coast, and we're going to kind of get a report on, on what happened there, you know, what they're seeing. But as of right now, it's all speculation. The water dropped to 42, now it's back up to 48, now it's dropping again. Um, man, it is hard to tell what is gonna happen with this, but it is kind of scary. I wanna do a different sort of thing today. I get a lot of questions, you know, where are you recording at, how do you do it, what, you know, what's this, what's that? I know so much about so many of you guys. As you're aware, if you call me or text me, I'm gonna call you or text you right back. So I feel like I know y'all really good, but I don't know a whole lot about me, so I kind of want to take you into how I got into YouTube, maybe some why, uh, maybe show you a little bit about you know how I edit, what it looks like when I'm doing that. So let's change things up this week. You know, you're used to the guy that sits in the dark room and with neon lights and talks about fishing. Well, let's change that. It looks a little bit different in here now, doesn't it? Now it's just the guest room that we no longer have. I've I've, I wanted to create a studio that was, you know, obviously in my home so that I could, I could work, but, you know, still be in, around the family and everything. So I told the wife one day, I said, hey, we don't hardly ever have guests over anyway, and we, we do have an upstairs loft, so let me, let me take after that room. And it was one of those situations where she's been asking me to do things for years. The house has new floors in it, but it took me a year and a half or more to do it. And I came into this room, repainted it, set it up, put the computers in. I did all of this in probably about five or six hours. Now, the, the, the stuff behind me here, that's kind of grown and accumulated, but the room was painted and ready to go in a couple of hours, and boy, she, I did not see it coming, but she was not happy that she asked me for years to do things, and when I decided I wanted to do something, it happened in a couple of hours, but it's just a man thing. So I'm gonna take you around the studio. I'm gonna kind of show you how it's set up, what I do, you know, like talk about a little bit about how I got into it, why I got into it, and things like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to my other camera, leave all this set up so you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at, and we're gonna go from there. Before we even get started with all of this, if this is something you like, if you like the behind the scenes stuff, leave a comment, let me know. Hit that hit the like button. It's it really helps my stuff grow and share, and I would really appreciate it. But I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff, so if you like it and think we should do this, you know, once every month or two, I would be, I would love to do it. So let me know in the comments, you know, like the video, help this thing get shared and, you know, just be a cool dude, please. You don't have to like it, but if you want to be a cool dude, like it. So first things first, since we're talking about my personal life here, something really exciting happened yesterday. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have heard of Salt Strong, but Salt Strong gave me a call yesterday and we're talking about doing some collaboration stuff with them. I think it, it, I think it'll be a good time. They were wanting somebody to come in and talk about Quirkies and some of the Texas stuff. Uh, Wyatt, one of their creators, has moved down here to the coast, not too far from me. And I think Wyatt and I are going to start doing some stuff together. You know, both for use on my page and on on their page. But I had a great talk with him. So Salt Strong, you know, check it out. Salt Strong is a big organization. I think they have like 177,000 followers on YouTube, 150,000 on Facebook. So I'm really excited to get to come and you know collaborate and contribute to to them a little bit and get to know those guys better they're they're way bigger than me and it's very exciting so hey thanks so much white and salt strong for even considering me thanks for the phone call and i can't i can't wait to you know get to work and, and do some stuff with you guys so like i told you all the studio is our old guest bedroom i i came in it i changed the color of the walls 
I put all LED lights in here, the, the regular lights for the house, just they just weren't enough to give me the light that I needed in here. I'm gonna show you my cameras, my monitors, my mics, all that kind of stuff. But first things first, how did I even get into YouTube? This wasn't my idea. I'm gonna be dead honest with you. I, I for Christmas a couple of years ago, well, I say a couple of years ago, not this Christmas, but last Christmas, I got a handwritten letter from my brother-in-law. This was my Christmas present from him. And basically it's, it's two pages and my brother-in-law, he's a, he's a very successful guy. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's one of my heroes. I'm very, uh, I'm incredibly blessed to have him in my life. And I'm very happy that, you know, that he's taking care of my sister. But he, he, he wrote me this letter and basically the gist of it was that, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I've been guiding a good while, but I've been fishing a long time and I've really put my heart and my all into it. I read just about every talk, Texas saltwater fishing magazine, uh, you know, every website, everywhere I could gather some information, I did it because as I've told some of you before, uh, I'm a first generation fisherman. My, my dad was not a saltwater guy, he bass fished a little bit and I grew up doing some bass fishing with him and you know, the rivers and tanks and ponds and, and lakes and stuff like that. But, but it wasn't until I had already put quite a bit of effort into it that I started meeting other people that you know, helped me uh, get my learning curve to, to you know, shrink, shrink it, whatever, make it shorter. But um, anyway, I put a lot, of, a lot of time into it and basically what this letter says is you put a lot of time into something that, you know, can't be bought. If, if you're just getting a new and efficient, there's no amount of money that can get you the experience. So why don't you find a way to, to, to get that across? And, you know, he, he went on 51% of the population listens to podcasts. 56% of the listeners are male. I mean, he, he does some work. He put some effort into this. And, um, heck, I mean, there's even a flow chart, y'all. I got a flow chart from him. So anyway, so he came up with this, you know, why don't you do something to, to help spread your knowledge? And I'm not sure if it was, if his intention was to monetize my knowledge, uh, you know, more so than being a guide, but you know, I elected to not do that. I don't believe that my, what I want to do is to charge to help others out because I was helped out. Everybody was helped out in some way. And I just didn't see, I, I didn't want to do that. So that's where I came up with the idea of doing YouTube. So I, I, that was in late December, early January. I, I, I worked on computers at, at my offices and my jobs, but it was just Excel, PowerPoint, Word, you know, Microsoft Office stuff is what it was. I had never even considered editing video or editing audio. A lot of the music that you guys hear in my stuff I have pieced all that together and I use other software to make all that happen. So these are things that I didn't know how to do. So the month of January, I was up all night, almost every night watching YouTube videos about how to work cameras, how to work computers, how to work software. What was the best software? Uh, uh, Robert Jones, the guy you've seen in my videos, he's a very good uh, cine, cine, cinematic, uh, videographer and he's a very good editor so I did have him at my disposal but I didn't want to just bug him to death so I learned everything I could and then the, for the finer more minute things then I would then I got with him and said hey you know explain this to me so for the entire month of January it was cameras and computers and then I turned around and did the same thing in February where you know I was up all night I'm talking three or four o'clock in the morning and I'm watching videos on how to start a YouTube channel, how to do your SEO, how to, you know, just all the different things that make it tick. So I, did, I had no background in this before. I didn't know what I was doing. It was scary. I'm not even great at public speaking. I get really nervous. I get really anxious whenever I'm asked to speak, even back in my oil field job, you know, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like being in front of the camera. I didn't like talking. As I've done this more and more and more, well, then, you know, I'm getting more comfortable with it, you know, more so now than I was whenever I started. But so I did that January, February, nothing but watching videos on how to do this. February, uh, mid-February, I did learn something. It's very dangerous to get on Amazon at 4 a.m. You're kind of delirious. You'll spend a lot of money. I have so much gear that I'll probably never use, but I, but I ordered it. But so then I went and bought my first computer, bought my cameras, did all that kind of stuff and, and got the start from there. One thing I always wanted to do is I wanted my channel to be different in the fact that I was teaching. So even the videos I've done where I'm fishing, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about why I'm fishing it, how I'm fishing it, 
you know, what I'm seeing. I, I never really wanted to have the channel where I'm just fishing and catching fish. You know, nothing wrong with those channels. It's just not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a learning channel. I'm a teaching guide. Let's have a teaching channel. So, so that's where that came from. So I'll, I'll show you some stuff here on the computer here in just a little bit. But hey, oh, and hey, check this out, by the way. Check out this cooler from Castaway Customs. It's an Orion cooler, so it's a big, nice, uh, you know, the roto molded stuff. But Castaway Customs put my logo on C Deck on top of it, and frankly, I couldn't be more excited about it. I mean, I am super excited about that. That's that's super neat. So big thanks to Castaway Customs. I'll put a link to their website down below. They do stuff like that. It's not overly expensive at all. So whenever I'm in my studio, you guys, you'll always see the, the lights and the stuff in the background. What happened was, was I did my first couple of fishing videos. Well, then COVID hit and I wanted to keep the momentum going. So I ordered this, this pegboard on Amazon for like, I don't know, a hundred bucks. And I, I made a backdrop there. I put this blue LED strip on it, which I don't know, it cost me another 15 or 16 bucks. I've always been working on a budget. So I did that and I made the backdrop. I did the videos during COVID and they were well received. But so, I mean, what I got up here, I've got some of my favorite lures. I got my DOAs, my high water corks, my Paul Brown fat boys, you know, a bunch of different hard baits that I use. I've got tools that I use to work on my rods and reels here. And then, you know, my grease and, and all that kind of stuff. So, but this, this, this board is a lot of what I like. And then I've got a lot of sentimental stuff. This is, my dad was a jeweler and this piece right here, he actually had a machine where he traced this out and it cut it into the back of every piece of jewelry he ever made. And so that's why I have this, that's the template for that. And then this is incredibly special to me. This is a coin that he kept in his pocket just about every day and he was a sculptor and there's a there's a little piece of clay on it right here that i know came off of his finger so that's really special to me i don't carry it um, because it would i would be devastated if i lost it so you know that's the background i have uh, two a customs they built me this blue redfish really neat um you know i've got some rod this is my dad's rod and reel i, I bought that loose for him for his birthday or christmas one year and so i've got that on the wall um, this wall you don't really see it as much in the cameras but I've got a couple of happy Gilmore checks up here. Some of it I won, some of it Cade won. Um, and then, you know, Anglers Anonymous and whatnot. So then we move around to what I'm looking at whenever I talk to you guys. So this is my table right here. When I first started, I had a big plastic table. And every time I hit it, you would hear it on the video go boom, real loud. And I hated that. So I finally, I bought a better table. I put this, I put this mat on it right here to kind of alleviate some of the noise. I got... I got some of my sponsor stickers here, some of my friend stickers. So what I do is I sit down here and I get to, when I'm talking to you guys, I got this blinding light right here in my face and it is incredibly distracting. It took a long time to get used to it. And then down here is a Sony a7 Mark III. That's about a $3,000 camera, I believe. It's, uh, it's quite pricey. And then right above it, I have this, this monitor here so I can see where I'm at, what I'm looking at, you know, you can see my hand in it right here. You can see, you can see this little camera that I, that I use for this. But so I've got my, my display here. I've got my camera here. I've got my lights here. Here I have a Rode studio mic. It's a powered mic. So it's a lot more sensitive. It gives what they call high dynamic audio. Uh, you know, it, it just helps my voice carry. So, and, and then, so, you know, back here, I got the mic again. I have my display. I have my camera. It's all on a tripod. Uh, it's powered, you know, down here at the bottom. And then I've got my lights over here. I have another set of lights uh, that kind of gives it, I, I, sometimes I'll put this blue gel on it right here. And that blue gel kind of gives my face that, that blue glow that, you know, you'll see it right here on the side of my face. Other times I'm using the, this more of an orange that kind of, you know, gives it just more of a natural sunlight feel. The lighting has always been very important to me. So whenever I kill all the lights in here, the only thing we're having are these two lights, the background lights, and that's it. So I do all of my editing on this computer right here. I actually just got this one. Uh, the one that I used before was a, it, it was a good computer, it was powerful, but the trouble I was having is a lot of the videos that you guys see me make, what I'm doing is I'm fishing all day on a Wednesday with my customers, and then I, I, uh, I drive home Wednesday afternoon. By the time I wash my boat, put gas in it, all that kind of stuff, it's usually four or five o'clock. I get home, 
um, I'll start, you know, I'll say hi to the family and everything, but then I'll, I'll start shooting a video and editing and I'll do that. It takes me probably, if I started editing and videoing at six, I would be done just doing the video and just doing the editing probably about 10 o'clock at night. And then I have to render and everything I shoot is in 4K with high dynamic range audio. So what ends up happening is, is the file is an absolute monster. So the 10 minute video that you guys see, it took that computer, and again, it was a good computer, but it took that computer about 45 minutes just to render it. And then once it was rendered, meaning I built it in the software and you know got everything the way that you guys saw it, but then I've got to convert the file formats because the, the software, it isn't gonna read on your phone or your computer. So then I actually have to render it to be something that is that is usable to you guys. And I render that. That took about 45 minutes just to render that. And then it's time to upload it to YouTube. Well, I live way out in the country. Um, at, at best case scenario, I get about a 10 megabyte per second upload, which means that I'm sitting at another 30 or 45 minutes just to upload it to YouTube. Once I upload it to YouTube, then I have to go in and I have to, to uh, create the SEO. So that's putting the keywords in it where whenever somebody types in, you know, red fishing or something, then the computer knows to go to my video for red fishing. I have to put in a title. Then I have to go create a thumbnail. Those thumbnails, they take 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour a piece. So long story short, I would guide all day. I would get home and then I wouldn't get in bed until midnight, one o'clock in the morning, something like that. And it just, it, it was just too much. So I went and bought this, this bigger, faster computer to try to alleviate some of that kind of shut down on that. So that's where the, the new computer come from and where I put the, the post where Anthony was over here helping me set it all up last night. One thing that, that I've been asked a lot and I want you guys to know, nothing I do is scripted. It's all just out of my head and, and me talking. So when you get the ums and stuff in there, that's, that's just my brain trying to catch up to my mouth. It is tough to do sometimes. But, and you know, sometimes I'll talk 12, 15, 18 minutes and you know, while maybe it seems scattered a little bit, just know that there's no there's no script. My my table is it 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 looks just like this whenever I'm talking. Like there is there's usually nothing on it. If I'm if I'm planning on using a lures or line or something, that'll be sitting there. But I don't I don't script anything out. I do worse whenever I script. I I'd rather just, you know, talk to you from my heart and from my brain and get stuff across than try to you know follow a dialogue it just it doesn't work it doesn't come across as authentic and genuine and frankly i am completely against anything that doesn't do that but you know there's a little bit about me if you guys like this behind the scenes you know learn a little bit more about it there's a lot of stuff that that you know i would like to do with you guys to you know get to know each other better so welcome to the studio welcome to be part of the family if you're new around here thank you so much for being here uh, if you enjoy this at all and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000, you know, here before too long. And, uh, you know, so, so that's it. That's where we're going and we will catch you on the next one.